Let's like, let's shift the pageantry stuff because I'm really curious about this because I know nothing about the pageantry right. world at all. I mean, I've watched occasionally on TV and I know the general concept of it, but there's also probably some misnomers I have about it too, as probably many people do. But uh, how did you get into that first of all? And then like, what what what's a typical pageantry uh, uh, event? Is that the right way you can say it? How, how do, what are the basic premises of it? Or what's the, how's it structured? How, how do they work? So it's hard because I've only ever done pageants as a married woman. Um, so there is pageantry for every age, down to tiny babies, to anybody who's even 50, 60 years old. Um, so what the great part about what my pageantry does, with, which is married women, it's anybody typically over the age of 18 that's legally married. Um, so you can have women that are 18. We have women that I've met that are in their 50s and 60s, and we are all competing. And so I think each pageant has a different premise, but the pageant system that I'm doing is called the Galaxy International Pageant System. Um, so I always like to say it's like Miss USA, but for married women. Um, and now Miss USA has the ability that you can now compete as a married woman. They actually just lifted their age restrictions and their marital status, which is crazy. It's it's never been done before. So there's not a, there's a Miss USA, but there's no Mrs. USA? So there's no technical Mrs. USA. There are pageants that have USA in the title. Um, there is a few pageant systems that have USA components to them. Um, so there is a Mrs. America system, which is the longest um, married women's pageant that has been out there. Um, and I have competed with that system before as well. There is Mrs. International system. I've unfortunately never competed with that system. There's a Mrs. Earth system, um, but my favorite is my current system and that's the Galaxy system. And the reason is, is just because of the way that the boss, so to speak, the owner of the pageant system has really laid the foundation of the system. So what I love about the Galaxy system is it really is like a family. Uh, the minute I entered this system about four years ago, they welcomed me 100% with open arms as who I was. I came into that system very hesitant because I had competed before and at that time, as I mentioned, I'm trying to get healthier, I'm trying to get physically fit. There were things said to me that you really shouldn't say to a woman. Um, things like I needed to lose weight, things like I will never win this system. And it didn't matter the work that I was putting in, it didn't matter at my core of who I was. And this system was like, no, we absolutely love what you're doing. We want you to be here and we would love to have you. And then when I actually got there in person, it matched. So a lot of the times, like you hear all these things about a system, maybe it's this, or maybe it's that. And, and you don't know what to believe because you've never been there. So, but when I actually got there, um, both the director and her staff were very, very kind, very, very humble. Um, you even got to meet the, the, the director's family. So the director is the owner. And to me, that's what made the difference for me. Um, when I left, I left with girls that I still talk to from four years ago. These are girls that I talk to, you know, not necessarily every single day, but they can message me and say, hey, like, how was your Christmas? How was your holiday? Um, and they live all across the world. So it's a sisterhood in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's kind of like a, I, I hate using the word sorority, but it, it kind of is like <laughs> a little sorority. That is sorority. So, you know, but in a, in, in a great version, it is a very big sisterhood. And so I'm proud of that. And I have competed for, this is my fourth year in this system, which tells you a lot. Um, it tells you, number one, that I really love the system. It tells you, number two, that I really want to be a part of this system. And number three, I really enjoy this system. Um, I also am competing this year because I was blessed um, to be awarded the title of Mrs. U.S. Galaxy. And that's not a title you can ask for. It's a title that's given, which is humbling and like surreal all at the same time. So the last Mrs. U.S. Galaxy um, title that was given was over five years ago. Um, so it's a title that comes directly from the staff of the organization, which is really important because that tells me that the work that I was doing before as Mrs. Pennsylvania, did, that mattered. And originally I was gonna come back as Pennsylvania again and I um, decided to actually apply for a different title. I wanted to apply as Mrs. East Coast, kind of move up a little bit. 
and represent the East Coast. And um, I got a phone call from the office three days later and they're like, we would really like to offer you the US title. Awesome. And Congratulations. How do you say no to that? Like, <laughs> I was very humble and I was like, me? Me? Like, <laughs> me? You want me to take this I feel like, amazing title? I feel like this is, uh, and so leave in the comments here if you want us to do a deep dive uh, on this, because uh, I'm feeling like uh, we're only gonna scratch the surface here today uh, on this content. What are some of the differences between pageantry and um, modeling? And, and then what are some of the things that have helped you having done one or the other? Like has one helped you to be better at the other? Yeah, so I think the key differences in pageantry and modeling is if you're gonna be doing fashion walking, the walk for pageantry is totally different. Mm. Um, so depending on what your pageant system does, my pageant has swimsuit, they have evening gown, and they have um, a, a place called fashion wear, and all three have a different walk. Um, gown is a little bit more slower and a little bit softer of a walk, whereas fashion wear can be upbeat, spicy, kind of like I mentioned with that fun walk. And then typically your, you know, your other walk is just like your normal, typical pageant walk. So it's a little bit different. Um, also in modeling, you're more behind the scenes. Um, you know, I've never really been done an interview as a model like that before. Um, so, you know, you might get interviewed for a mag magazine or something like that, but it's all written. This is an interview in person. So you have to get a little bit more handling of what you've accomplished and be able to talk to somebody in person. And you talk in front of a panel of judges or you talk in round robin style. So you go from judge to judge to judge, again, depending on the system. So it can be a little intimidating when you're coming into a room of 12 judges and you're sitting there and you're basically bearing your soul on this is why you want this job, so to speak. So pageantry is a job and in itself, it's, it's a little um, crazy to think of what we do, but it really does make a difference. And I think modeling can too. I've been able to accomplish some really amazing things as a pageant title holder. Such as? And so such as I have been able to give out over 1500 free haircuts. I've been able to donate over 5,000 items within the past couple years to the homeless. And yeah, I could do that as a model, but I wasn't getting the same interest as I was as a pageant queen. Um, when I'm out and about in the city as a pageant queen, you have a crown and you have a sash and everybody wants to know what that's about. And I always like to say, it's like the shiny microphone. It's like, <laughs> stop me and ask sure, me yeah. about this. And even though you can do that as a model, I think it's harder as a model, unless you are like an um, influencer or very well known on social media or even very well known in your town. You, you know, I go out every day and when I'm out in my everyday clothes, you know, I don't get stopped and ask, oh, tell me about this. Um, so I always call this the crown and the sash as a conversation starter. It allows me to have a conversation about what really is important and why I'm doing pageantry, which is all about my platform and giving back to the community. So let's just very quickly, because again, I want to get to a couple of last uh, things on modeling, uh, and then it, we have to give ourselves enough time to shoot. So right. um, what is your platform? So my platform is Heart Health Awareness at Any Age. Um, it started when my dad suffered a heart attack in 2005 that left him completely paralyzed. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, on October 10th of 2020, my dad lost his life to his underlying heart condition and he's not here anymore. Um, in addition to that, one of my best friends passed away from sudden cardiac arrest and I myself found out that I have a heart condition that thankfully doesn't um, have any negative side effects as of right now, but it's called MVP. And so what I'm doing with my platform is I'm doing education on simple tips and tricks that can make somebody heart healthy and my other focus is mind, body, and soul. So giving people that support that they need to get basic hygiene necessity. And my other focus is hands-only CPR. It's really important for me to let people know that if you know hands-only CPR, which is just pressing in on the chest and doing the compressions, you can increase somebody's life expectancy by 40%. Wow. And it's so easy to learn. You can learn it in two minutes flat, again, right after this interview, um, <laughs> on American Heart Association website. But what I think is most important for people to know is that 85%, no, I'm sorry, 80 to 85% of cardiovascular disease is preventable. Mm. And so I think 
as a national title holder, it's really important for me to get out there and get those simple tips and tricks from people like you that make a difference. So I always say, you know, what's one thing in your life that you do that makes you heart healthy? So is that an actual question? Yeah, that's an actual question. Oh, wow. Uh, photo shoots. Okay. So you like right? photo so, shoots. So I mean, it's a, just an act that's actively moving and there's a lot of uh, up and down and right. lifting and moving, so, moving around. Yeah. So to me, that's a tip and trick because if you're a photographer out there or if you want to have a hobby, moving increases your energy. Mm -hmm. And that's something totally different. So I always like to say, what is it in your life that you're already doing that makes you heart healthy? Because somebody watching might say, oh, I never thought that a photo shoot could actually help me become heart healthy. The easiest thing is to start drinking more water. Um, because most of the time what people don't know is that 85 to 90% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. Right. Um, chronic dehydration can cause daytime fatigue. It can cause short-term memory loss and we do not get enough water. So that's always my first tip is drink more water. Especially about if it's out of a cool mug, like cool 412 mug. photo mug. Uh, available, not available online currently, but uh, maybe someday. <laughs> so throw down in the comments if, if you soon. want swag. I got some ideas for swag down the line, but uh, maybe when we get the subscription base up a little bit bigger, we'll start rolling out a swag store. I'm going to get like the that. first mug. There you go. <laughs> this mug. Um, so uh, let's wrap up with just some tips for models. So just right. outside of what we've already talked about and some of the tips you've already provided to them. What are like another, let's say another two tips that you would give to models on, uh, you know, uh, if they're new in their journey or even if they're mid journey, let's, let's say even mid journey. Mid journey, I would just say keep practicing. Um, I go online and I research poses and I practice in my mirror um, because there might be something that you haven't done for a while and that you don't do um, for a while. And I say that even for beginners, practice mm -hmm. in a mirror, but even mid journey, I think we need to remember not to be so hard on ourselves. We expect a lot of perfection things and just have fun have fun at the photo shoot um whether it's you need music or whether you're you you know just need a vibe but have fun with it and at the end of the day um it's a photo shoot yeah. so you know we can always reshoot um so yeah, i just think not, just reminding if, yourself of that if it's not fun then why are we doing it especially as a hobby again as a hobbyist right. and and um and even as a professional, I feel like your job should be fun. Yeah, it, tra it translates. I mean, it, tra it certainly translates into the images, but the, even just the environment and wanting to, to rebook somebody and, and shoot again. You know, if, right. it's, if it's a miserable experience, who wants to come back and do that again? Right. And what would you say would be two tips that we didn't cover for models for a photo shoot? Oh, wow. Uh, I, uh, this is a spur of the moment. We've covered so much already. Um, I'm just going to reemphasize communication is vitally important. Um, I think, again, you can't communicate and th there's no uh, such thing as over communication. Um, and um, I think uh, number two is just really study your craft. And you, you touched on that a little bit, so I appreciate that. Um, because I think even if you're not a professional, treating it, even if it's your first shoot or you only do it occasionally, treating it professionally, I think is important. You know, we, only have, we all have a very limited amount of time on this, this ball of mud, right? right. So, uh, you know, respecting the other person's time by bringing your all to it, but also, of course, being on time, and that's part of professionalism. Um, but just, uh, you know, if, you, if you're serious about it, if it's something you want to do on a regular basis, uh, then you have to work at that craft just like anything else. Right. You know, I'm constantly watching YouTube videos about how to get better at photography or learn new tips and tricks or learn new techniques or learn about the newest gear or whatever it happens to be. I think, uh, you know, there's somewhat of an expectation for, but also I think models should put in as much work as I'm putting in on the other side of the camera. So I would agree with that. And if you are unsure, again, I think what you said, communication is key. So communicate to your photographer. Like I'm still new, so I'm going to need a little bit more direction. Um, and I think being open to that direction is, is important as well. So, yeah, it's not uncommon that when if I've shot with a, a very new model that it's like, okay, what do I do with my hands or what do we do now? And like they're out of poses within like the first two minutes of the shoot. And I'm like, okay, well, I can give you some tips and some ideas, but it'd be better if you would have, you know, to practice ahead of time before you come to the shoot or study up on some, some posing techniques or right. ideas. So, uh, again, it's, uh, I can concentrate more on the subtleties versus having to coach through, you know, every pose right. through the whole shoot too. It's very tiring. And one other <laughs> so. thing too, is you could also ask your photographer, would it be okay for me to bring a body mirror? Mm -hmm. um, I think especially when you're new starting out, I remember again, my, my friend Ashley gave me that tip. She said, when I first started out, I brought a body mirror. 
Um, and I thought that was a really good tip too. So shout out again to my friend Ashley for that last tip. Or you can just book an Airbnb with the biggest mirror in, Ever. in, the, in right. the history. Of mirrors, we need so. to show that mirror later. Yeah, that I was going to say. We'll I'm see like, it in some I of the need, photos. You actually I, can't see it here. This I need that mirror in, in my exactly. life. I think you maybe see a little bit of it back here, but it's, it's a massive mirror that goes to the almost to the ceiling. So, um, But with that, we're going to wrap up this session because, again, uh, we need to do some shooting. Right. And uh, so I really appreciate the time, though. I really appreciate your insights. I think, again, this is... Uh, yeah, this is my third or fourth one of these that we've uh, recorded now, uh, but it was very different as far as the conversation and, and some of the specifics we went into, which is great. Uh, Love it. Just giving giving different perspectives and uh, giving people a platform to share their their story, but also share their unique voice and their their unique experiences through this is what I'm why I'm doing this. So. Uh, again, appreciate it. Um, Thank you. And uh, again, I uh, appreciate it if you leave some comments and let us know what you thought of this. Let us know what uh, questions you'd like to see asked of future models and sessions like this. And uh, as always, we appreciate, or I appreciate, I should say, uh, a subscription and, uh, and subscribing to the channel because that there certainly helps in long term uh, making more content like this. So uh, have a great day. See you guys later. Tune in again next time and let's go have some fun. Let's go make some images. I'm ready. All right. Do it. That's it. Love it. Good job. That was great. Yeah.